make sure that there's, before we leave, to bring a box of gloves, a full box of gloves, especially if you're bringing them for people to um, touch the lungs because they can use one glove on one hand and they can feel the clean lung and then they can feel the dirty part of the smoker lung. And because these are so free from aldehyde, I usually keep gloves on the whole time. So I'm able to um, make sure and not get formaldehyde on my skin. In each one of these kits, you'll find a yuck mouth and his tongue comes out. And in our back storage room, we have a little jar of um, chew or tobacco that actually can, you can put in this if you want, um, or you can just set it aside. And this has different um, one through eight and it tells you what is wrong with the mouth if people have questions. It, um, this, it goes over cavities, tooth loss, gingivitis, um, gum recession, cancer of the gum, another cancer of the gum, cancer of the palate, and cancer of the tongue. So people have a lot of questions about these and so you can use that as a tool. It's also good to pass around if you're working with children. And you'll usually find two boxes of gloves because we overstocked the gloves because one time we ran out and it wasn't a good feeling. This is a tar jar, and in this tar jar, it's a year's worth of tar from a smoker that smoked one pack a day for one year. And what we do with this is we explain that when people have a smoker's cough, 30% of your lungs are only strong enough to cough up that 30%. The other 70% actually stays in your lungs and that's what starts the breathing problems and the emphysema, COPD, asthma, and bronchitis. So that is what that is. So now we'll get to the lungs, and the lungs um, have a laminated description on them, description of explaining how to set it up and all the different parts. And so we use this visual here. If you need to look at that, you're welcome to. It's always advisable to also have paper towel nearby just because it splashes. This lung is labeled the healthy lung and basically just pop these open and I just set it here. Releasing it a little bit before we put them out actually let some of the odor escape before it's set out. Here's the smoker lung. I do the same thing. I pop these open. They have a little pop here so it's not, not very strong when everybody so this is one tray these are the trays that the lungs will drip into if there's any thing that will drip I usually set those in there you'll have this pipe this pipe. And they're all labeled alphabetically, so basically you would go A to D, and um, the guy will also show you as well. These are pig lungs, and people will ask questions about if they're real, and they are real pig lungs. Additionally, people will ask questions about how did this, we get the pig to smoke. And when you work with children, they get really upset. They're worried about the pig. And so I always start before I talk to anybody about the presentation to let them know that um, that's something that we didn't do. The lab had the lungs already, and it created it within a lab so that the pig never smoked. This is a pump, and basically the way I figure it out is I squeeze it until see which one the air comes flying out of, and it's this one here on the left. Here's the, the tube, and this piece is essential. Before you leave to an event, you must make sure that you have this piece, otherwise it won't work. And it actually belongs to this kit, but we try to keep it onto this. You screw this in and on here and here. Make sure it's secure and this goes on the floor and then you will use this to inflate the lungs once that is all put together. 
So right now, I'm going to look at this and it's going to have me put the, this pipe here and this base and then this first base. And this is where the pump will go into. And after that, you're going to take these two pipes and you're going to insert them here. They're both labeled B and into here. And the next one is this pipe and it goes into here. This one has E on it. This is a flow for the healthy lung and a flow for the unhealthy lung. So when these are lined up with the hole that is letting the air go through, you can shut it off on both of them if you like, or you can just use one to demonstrate the healthy lung and then shut that one down and then you can open this one up to demonstrate the smoother one depending on the demonstration. So then you open these and you always want to make sure that there's enough juice in them before you leave. This is called uh, NASCO Guard and this is the recommended chemical to help preserve these and we don't want them to be drying out because that reduces their lifespan with us. In addition, we have this little spray bottle that's travel size that can go with you to um, your health fairs or your schools, wherever you may be using this. Because if the lungs are hanging up and if you're blowing them up consistently, they will dry out. So here is the healthy lung. So basically, you just take this pipe and you insert it right here and it hangs. Here is the smoker lung, and we used to not use these trays, but we use them now, or these little buckets to help to keep the juices all together because it's not a fun cleanup. If for some reason that you notice they're dry, you would just spray. Make sure nobody's standing in front of you so when you spray, you're not spraying anybody with that. So now, uh, if you want to do a demonstration with both of them together, you just have both of these open and you pump. And clearly you can see the healthy lung is in a lot better shape than the unhealthy lung. And we give people gloves and they can feel the softness and the different texture of this lung here. And this lung here is really flappy. Parts of it are not even flowing up. There's a tumor right in here. There's a mass right in here. And you could feel them. And it's really important to have people look at all of those pieces. If you turn this around, and you turn this one around, then you're able to see the backs of it, which gives a different perspective of each lung. And if you let them deflate, you can shut this lung down and you can just leave this one parallel. Sometimes you'll find holes in the lungs. This lung has holes in it. And so you have to be careful if you're with children because sometimes the formaldehyde will spray out of that. So you have to keep a track of it. Sometimes we have to turn it a certain way so it won't spray forward or on anybody for that matter. And that's the lung kit. And if you're doing a fair with lots of people, I would just keep spraying these every 30 minutes. Um, when things slow down, I usually just as simply as this kind of 
re-soak them in their juices. And you want to be sure that all the lung is in because you don't want to cut any pieces of it. And I just kind of close the, the locks down, put this one back in there until you get a bigger rush of people that comes through. If you're done for the day, you basically would just shut those down. At this time, I have lots of juice on my hands, so I would take these and put them in a trash can. It's always important to remember a trash can before you start up, because if you are having people use gloves, you don't want them dripping formaldehyde everywhere. So we would take these and put it in a trash can that's right to the next next to the table. I mean, I don't have one right now, but I put that in here. So I'll put some new gloves on, and with that, with that, I will act as if we are shutting down. We typically have a, um, Lysol wipes or disinfectant wipes, and we'll wipe everything down just to ensure that we didn't get juice on everything, and wipe this down. Um, wipe the trays down if anything splashed within the basis. Take it back and um, take this off. We like to keep this part on here as long as it's secure. This unscrews. this you deflate. At the end of this hose there is a clamp that you just squeeze and then it goes right into there. You take this. And I like to keep this part in because then it makes sure that that little piece doesn't get fumbled and potentially lost. We've had, had to throw away a whole kits because we've lost that piece before. So we want to make sure that we don't lose that. And so I'll put that aside for now. And so then I just start taking pieces apart. I take the first and the second flow pipe apart. This is the middle, and the connector, the base connector. Some kits you might get, and they might have everything put together, so it might be confusing, but they are labeled, so if you see a B and a D on another uh, together, all you would have to do is just take it apart and follow the instructions. It depends on who dismantles it at the end, but I think it's easiest just to dismantle everything so it's easier for the next person to follow the instructions. So that's done. Wipe this out. Wipe this out. Take one tray and it goes on top of the other. And then one line on top here and one here doesn't fit perfectly, but it works enough. If you have additional questions, there is the book that came with the lungs to explain different um, items that you can do and that you can discuss with the lung demonstration. And so it gives you all of the characteristics of the lung and it helps you to understand that better when you get questions, you're able to have the knowledge behind it to know what um, you're working with. This is also the kit, the assembly kit that it came with, and it also is the, it has the number of each piece. So it, it's advised highly, especially when we check these out to the community, to go through and make sure that you have these when it's checked out, and make sure that you have them when it's checked back in, because we did lend one out, and if we, if we miss a, piece, something as simple as this, it doesn't let the entire kit work together. So with that, the instructions, 
the dual lung assembly itemized sheet is in here. We put this into this large bucket and these fit right in here. And then we can just place the piping in the front. We put the yuck mouth here, the tar jar on the side, the spray kit in here. We also carry sanitizer, and this is to help make sure that after the children or anybody uses with the gloves, have them throw the glove away immediately and they can use sanitizer if there's not a sink available. So sometimes you just kind of fumble, but usually this is the way it works the best, is to have this decompressed, have it in here, have the tar jar right here, and then we usually just kind of work the sanitizer and the spray in so it all flows nicely. Take the gloves and sometimes I would just take the rest of the gloves if there's not that many left and put them into this but there's still a good amount of them in here. Any leftover gloves, the paper towels or the kit, the Lysol sanitizing kit. and then you're done. And I always take the sanitizer and keep it aside. So when I'm done with that, I can take my gloves off and I can kind of wipe everything down on here just to make sure that it doesn't have any 